You thought the kid was yours. When did you find out it wasn't? So behind her back, I did one of those like DNA swabs and sent it in. I got the results. I looked at him and I didn't know what to do about it. You know, it was just looking at the baby. Then looking at her, she knew something was off. So she ended up going through my phone while I was sleeping and saw the DNA test. When I woke up, she was gone. Hello? Hello? Is this Lyle? Who is this? This is Tristan. Tristan. How are you doing? Tristan. Yes. Take me off a of speakerphone. I, you are not on speakerphone, but I yes, wasn't I am. moving am I, around. Am I on a headset? Sorry, I am I on a headset? Different spot. Am I on a headset? Not at all. Am I on AirPods? Heads, her phone is to the head. Phone's to the head? Yep. Okay, now! And then your phone explodes, <laughs> and it kills you. Like right. that scene from uh, Grand Theft Auto V. It's you know old Nokia. About? Yeah. Anyway. Um, well, Tristan, what's going on? How's life? Uh, it's It's been interesting. How about yourself? Ah, uh, who cares about me? Why has your life been interesting? Uh, okay. So, what I texted you was about my ex fiance's secret life. Um, I met her, like, September 2022, and apparently she met another dude around the same time, and she was going back and forth between him and I, and she got pregnant like within a month of you know me meeting her so i thought not knowing this other guy that that kid was mine right so supported her through all of the pregnancy through you know all of seven months until i found out that kid wasn't mine through a paternity test and after that i was kind of like doing some digging around trying to find some answers because nothing was really adding up uh i went over to his her grandmother's house and they told me about this other guy how she would tell them that you know he's the father but i know him i i couldn't have kids if i wanted to raise her kid as my own it was it's a yeah <laughs> it's a fun story so you knew this woman for a month and then she got pregnant yeah a little bit over a month how'd you meet her through tinder through tinder and uh you thought the kid was yours and um wh when did you find out it wasn't i found out february 15th of this year how long was that after you had met um so i met her in 2022 so just about two years, um, the baby was seven months old and I didn't have a job at the time that I met her. So I went around looking for a job. I'm like, okay, if I'm going to have this kid, I'm going to have to, you know, be, be able to su support both of them. And so I got a job at Taco Bell, worked my way up within eight months. I was the regional manager. I took over that store that I, you know, started working at. And then got a job with the county. So I'm working for the county now. And <clears throat> some things weren't adding up. Some things just made me question. So behind her back, I did one of those like DNA swabs and sent it in. I got the results the 15th of February. And I didn't know what to do about it. So I kind of got the results. I looked at them, went back and... You know, it was just looking at the baby. Then looking at her, she knew something was off. So she ended up going through my phone while I was sleeping and saw the DNA test. And when I woke up, she was gone. She she took the ring and stole my forerunner. Damn. So you raised this kid. So you meet a woman on Tinder. You have this crazy accident pregnancy. You step the fuck up. You go, I'm going to raise this kid. You have the kid. The kid's seven months old. You find out it's not yours. Am I recapping Correct. this correctly? Yeah, and the same night, she was gone. 
I woke up. Was the she where was, was gone, the kid? Did she leave the kid? Did she take the kid? Oh, she took the kid. Fucking damn. So what? Ah, oh, man. And this yeah, was so this was two months ago. The that this happened, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Seeing the Did results, you, I felt yeah. like you know I lost a child. Like mm -hmm. I I didn't know how to kind of react, and I didn't want to just blow up on her. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just wanted to sit with that information for a minute before I did anything about it. Mm -hmm. And she knew something was wrong. So she went through my phone and, you know, changed the passcode on my phone. So I had to like factory reset it and I lost all my photos and, you know, a bunch of important things that I need. But, you know, that's kind of a small inconvenience compared to everything else. But on top of already feeling like I just lost a child, they were gone. And I, there were no answers. There were no, you know, nothing added up. So, you know, I did some detective, detective work. I found out who the actual father was. And he and I right now seem to be doing okay. Like, we're friends. We're talking about it. We kind of have a very similar experience with this woman. And... Right now, I'm just trying to get my name off the baby's birth certificate. So, like, I'm not, you know, having to pay child support or whatever for a child that's not mine. And kind of just move on with my life. So you and this kid's father became friends? Oh, yeah. What do you, what do you guys Yeah, I talked to him about? last night, actually. About what? Uh, well, we talked about different, like, experiences that we had with her, like how we met, everything like that. Um, my attorney is actually trying to attach him on the, like, whole court situation so he can sign, like, okay, if I get a paternity test and I'm the actual father, then I'll step up and be that baby's father, you know? So we're just trying to figure out how to go about doing all this and potentially get him full custody of the child because... She's very clearly not someone that should be raising a child right now. So what's his deal with her? Like, how did this even like, uh, uh, how, what's, what's his story with her? Um, it's like eerily similar. Uh, we met her around the same time, September. Um, I don't know if I met her first or how that went, who met her first, but you know, met on Tinder, talked it up, things were going well, and uh, she got pregnant, like, very very soon into both of us talking to her. And, um, you know, he did the same thing I did, stepped up, was like, shit, I don't have a job right now, I need to figure out, okay, what am I going to do, what's the best way to raise this child? So he got a job, he, you know, worked his ass off supported her as I supported her. So she, later I found out and found like different jewelry and stuff like that. It's, yeah, very similar to what I went through. So was he, so he was still having a relationship with her throughout the whole time that you were? Oh yeah. Yeah. So her family is about like 40 minutes, an hour away. And she would want to go and visit them. So I let her borrow my truck, drive down to visit her family while I went to work. And sure enough, she was going to see him. Like June of last year, she convinced me to let her take my truck to Santa Cruz to do like this camping trip with her friend, like this guy. But I always thought that they were just close friends, you know. And uh, apparently the tent that I bought her to use because she was pregnant, they, you know, did their business in the tent. And, you know, they were still a thing all the way up until October of last year while her and I were together. So she just would go back and forth and, you know, tell this part of her family, like, oh, he's the father. And then other part of the family like he's not the father but he doesn't want to talk about it just you know don't bring it up 
he knows he's not the father, but he wants to raise the child like it's his. Because he can't have kids, which I can. He's just manipulative. And so was she... When the baby was born, how'd that work like was this other guy oh, not God. like in the, like how the fuck how the fuck did she keep this charade going once the baby was born so when the baby was born i was with her and i stayed up holding her hand and helping her get the epidural stayed up all the way like through like four in the morning her water broke four forty. the baby was already out like it was a very fast like crazy birth and um after things calmed down i fell asleep and after i fell asleep she actually called the actual father was like hey i'm sorry the i didn't have time to warn you and let you know about coming to the hospital but your daughter's here and i was literally five feet from her just to sleep Wow. And she watched me sign the uh, voluntary declaration of parenthood that the fathers do. Wow. And in the state of California, it's incredibly difficult to nullify that signature because they don't want those children to become wards of the state. So, like, even if you're not the actual father and later on it, you know, you find out, if you sign that, it's incredibly difficult. To, you know, take it to court and get it to be taken off unless you actually know the father and he's willing to step up. Hence wow. why I, you know, became friends with the actual father because he seems like a chill dude. And, you know, we just got played by a woman. Um, I mean, that's, in, that's such a... I, I can't even begin to understand how she was able to keep this charade up while being right. Cause it's like, even like, you know, trying to have like two boyfriends at once is, is, it sounds like a c complicated fucking thing, but to do it while you're pregnant and both of them think they're the father. I mean, that's in that, how the fuck do you even do that? Which unfortunately I don't even know if it was only the two of us. Right. You know, there's possible there was more and, I, I was working 12 hour plus shifts. So I was working my ass off the moment I would get home. Like I, I was tired. I, I got to a point where I couldn't keep fighting and pushing for answers because she would throw in just enough truth to make it provable, but still be a lie. So she was very good. She's a con artist. Like mm -hmm. her, her family is just the same. Like her, little sister ended up moving in with us because her grandmother kicked her out, which later I found out they planned it. They, you know, lied to the grandmother and she got custody of her little sister. But, uh, I looked into that girl's eyes and I honestly saw evil. I, it, <laughs> I just fought and fought to keep pushing and, she would threaten to leave and like go to her mom's in Modesto and I, I didn't want to not be a part of my child's life. So I just kind of caved and, you know, at, at a certain point I was too tired to keep fighting and I was just getting walked over. So do we know where she is and where that kid is? Yes. Yeah, What's I up? actually went down. My attorney told me, if you know where the forerunner is, just go and get it. And I drove down there after work one day, hopped into it, drove, started driving. They ran out of the apartment and like climbed on top of it. She was current, like in the middle of this, bashing the window, trying to break it with the keys. And <laughs> they wouldn't get off the car. So the cops were called. They came. I showed them like, hey, my attorney told me to get my car back. And so the cops called AAA for me and helped me tow it back home. And it, yeah, <laughs> I've been through quite a lot of craziness. Reasonably. And what, and okay, so, so you got to get your car from this woman and then your, your buddy, your new friend, he's got to get his kid. What's up with that? 
Yeah. <clears throat> um, our court date is September. And, you know, part of that is, okay, we need a court-mandated paternity test. So that'll be done for both of us, for the baby. It'll prove that I'm not the father and, you know, find out if he truly is the father. Right, does Unless he even know that he's the father? There's fifth, not like a third whatever. guy. We don't know. Oh, my God. How old are you, man? Yeah. I'm 25. 25. Jeez. And and this has been your do. And this this whole doozy has been going on for two years, almost? Something like that? Uh, from since I've known her. But, you know, the crazy, extra crazy stuff, I guess, has been since... since February. Hmm. So, okay, I got to ask you this. Um, like, you and this guy, like, is he your boy now? You guys ever, like, hang out and just, like, get high and play Fortnite? Like, what's up? Um, we've been trying to set up a time to meet up. He's, he's a bit far away because he was kind of in that side of her life. But we're trying to set something up hopefully next week. To finally meet in person. But like when I got the Forerunner and they were loading it up on the on the, like tow truck, I called him and I was telling him what happened. And he's like, yeah, fuck her, dude. Yeah, like all this stuff. So, you know, he's on my side. Man, that'd be cool if you guys became like good boys, you know, planned a trip to Vegas together, hung out. I can honestly highly see that. Like, he seems um, like a chill, genuine dude, so. Hmm. So, what's next for you, man? How the fuck, uh, uh, what, what, do you have any, do you have anything positive and good planned for your life? Um, I'm planning a trip to the Philippines next year. I have a nice job now. I'm happy, content, trying to work, get more experience, and then move on to a better paying job. But, you know, where I'm at right now, I'm pretty good. Like, it was it was a weight lifted off my shoulder. Like, I, I wasn't ready to have a kid. And I especially wasn't ready to be with this person. But, you know, I proposed because I thought that kid was mine and just tried to do everything right. But now I can focus on myself. That's wonderful, man. That's really great. Hmm. I mean, I'm I'm sorry that uh, it's that's such a that's got to be such a weird, crazy feeling. Yeah, it, it really must be like losing a child, but in this weird way where you know, like like you were saying, like you weren't even really ready, and but you know, you, you stepped up, and then you find out the kid's not yours. And it's really painful, but it's also a weird relief, you know, because now you get to go to Most the Philippines, definitely. you get to live your own life. Um, it sounds like you've recovered well from this this crazy thing. I mean, it still mentally fucks with me, but, you know, it's kind of... I'm doing what I can about it and everything else that I can't do anything about it. I just kind of have to let go. Like it doesn't um, affect anyone else but myself to have, you know, hatred in my heart for that or anything else. So I'm just kind of accept it and move on, try to make the best of it. What's your name again? I'm Tristan. You're a good fucking dude, Tristan. I appreciate that. <laughs> really, you yeah, got a lot uh, of character. It's been a roller coaster. I mean, yeah, it has been a roller coaster. I mean, this is a, a a crazy, crazy thing. I mean, if this happened to me, it would drive me completely insane. And you, I mean, I'm sure it did drive you completely insane. And maybe it took a little while, but you seem like you got a a, a decent head on your shoulders still after everything. I mean, there's so much more like on top of it, but I try to just kind of lay out a base foundation of that shit show but <clears throat> yeah that's honestly like i thought about drinking and i kind of did a little bit afterward went for, like drank for like a week 
and was like, this isn't helping. This isn't doing anything. I don't smoke weed. I don't, you know, do drugs. I work for the county. Like, I can't do any of that stuff. So I basically only have alcohol, and I just don't, don't get anything out of that. I've always been into dirt bikes and kind of through the relationship. I was taking care of her. She was on bed rest, and, you know, I kind of lost all my hobbies. I, It was taking care of two children and then when her sister came three so I kind of would work I would get home make dinner clean the house they wouldn't do anything they would just be on their phones and you know doing whatever while I took the baby after I got home made dinner for everyone I was kind of just doing it all so I didn't have time for any hobbies but like I learned how to ride a dirt bike when I was two years old so bought a YZ 450 and just going out to Prairie City doing my thing. Would you ever have a kid of your own with a sane person? Oh, God, with the same person? No. No, no, I said with a sane person. Oh, with the same person? Mm. I've genuinely looked into, like, vasectomies. And honestly, if I never had a kid i'm i'm okay with that like it it was rewarding to you know see the progression change those diapers and you know really be there for that child but you know that kind of thing where people talk about like the moment i saw my child just the, the amount of love in my heart changed like i didn't know what love was before i met my child that didn't happen for me and maybe it will for when you know it's the same person and i know that's my kid but uh, uh, i don't know hmm. well tristan uh look man you've been through a crazy roller coaster and um you've you've it's like it's it, you you truly are that whole thing of no good deed goes unpunished so uh, my brother, enjoy the enjoy the the motor biking, motor biking, right? Yeah. Enjoy the motor biking. Enjoy the Philippines. Enjoy whatever the fuck you want to do with your life, man. I mean, you're you're a young single guy with no kids and a remote job. Go crazy. Kind of what I'm doing, just finding myself again and making the best of it. Um. Is there anything else that you want to say to the people of the computer or, or that you want to just talk about it in general before we go? Uh, I do want to appreciate you, you know, calling me up and letting me have some kind of way to talk about this. Like, I don't yeah. don't really talk about this with my friends or, you know, haven't gotten an actual therapist or anything like that. So it was is there a reason you, is there a reason you avoid out. talking about this with your friends? Um, it's my close friends. They were like, when I told them that the kid wasn't mine, they were like, I fucking called it. So they're not, they're helpful. They absolutely are. Like it, we joke about shit. We have a dark sense of humor, but they're not someone that I would go to and be like, Hey, I feel empty inside or, you know, anything deep like that. So that's why I don't really talk to them about it. Do you feel empty inside? No, not really. I think honestly I was I was depressed and not not exactly happy when I was with her. And now that I'm kind of free again and I'm doing all these different things to get back to being me, I feel good. That's wonderful, man. Um, look, you know, uh, I appreciate you coming on here and telling your story. Uh, I'm inspired by uh, the great perspective that you have on all of this, and I wish you the best of luck. And be careful in the Philippines. I, I, I just got back from Thailand, and I didn't, I didn't realize that it is 100 degrees all the time in that area of the world. So, uh, you know, pack shorts. Oh, yeah, and humid. Oh, yeah. Definitely, yeah. I'm from, I grew up in Arizona, so that. The day I left and moved to California, it was 126 degrees, but that's just dry heat. It's not like Texas where it's super hot and humid. But it's fun. It's um, cool, man. You'll but have I a good do time. have one thing. Yeah, please. Oh, I bet I will. 
Hit me. To all the people expecting a child, you know, heavily think about just doing a paternity test before you sign anything. I know in Tennessee, they now made it a federal crime for paternity fraud, which is what I went through. Um, just, you know, have that conversation with your partner. Like, hey, you know, it has nothing to do with you. It's just kind of a secondary thing. Like, I want to make sure without any doubt. Highly suggest it, you know. Take care, Tristan. Thank you. Yeah, take care, Law. That was a fascinating phone call, man. I, You know, it that phone call actually reminded me of something that I wanted to take the chance to talk about on the podcast just real quick. Um, I thought about, I've been thinking about this recently. Uh, uh, so a question I get asked a lot that I kind of previously hadn't um, had a good answer for, uh, I, I kind of came up with my answer, or at least one of my answers. Uh, people will ask me a lot, like, what have I learned from doing this, from talking to all these people, like on the street and on the podcast and all that. And um, I've, I've probably learned a lot of things that I haven't quite yet figured out. But one thing that I know I've, I've learned from talking to all these people truly is that like fucking life is like a matter of perspective, right? Because like look at this fucking guy that we just talked to. This guy went through a crazy roller coaster of emotions that for a lot of people could have spent the rest of their life dwelling on and letting it fuck them up and letting it make them depressed and fearful and distrusting and sad for a long time right but this guy Tristan, I mean, he's just, he's a good fucking guy, and at the end of all this, where he is right now, his he's got a great perspective on his life, and he's taking advantage of it, and he's he's not sitting here like, you know, oh, I'll I'll, I'll never trust anyone again, I'll never do anything again, uh, you know, this this just fucks me up. He's He's got a really good perspective, and so he's happy, and he's not empty inside, and he's not... He's, he's able to recover because of his perspective, you know? And that's what I've learned from talking to a lot of callers, because some people will call in and talk about the most fucked up shit. Like, remember the, uh, the, that guy who blew his fucking arm off, you know, two weeks before he had called me? He was... He, I mean, he wasn't all great, but he was chilling, joking around... You know, some people will just call and talk about these these crazy fucking life situations that they've been in. And they get through it, they get over it, because they internally have an optimistic, positive perspective. And then other people, they'll be like, you know, my <laughs> other people, they'll be like, you know, I lost $100 investing into Bitcoin in my life is completely decimated and I'll never be happy again. Right? So that's one of, that's just something I wanted to say is that, and I think about it with my own life too because you know um you know I, I get to live a cool life doing this stuff but um you know I also I get I get I get horribly depressed all the time and and I'm I'm you know I, I talked about this a little bit in a previous podcast with that guy Mike um it's like how much of this shit is is external life events versus just what you make of it in your own head, and I don't have a fine I don't have a final answer to that question. I'm still figuring all of that out as as both my internal brain chemistry and, and perspective shifts as well as the external realities of my life. Um, I'm still arriving at an answer to that question, but I just want to say that's one of the things I've learned from talking to all these people is that uh it's it's crazy important um what your brain decides to make of your situation more so even than the situation itself um but yeah good luck tristan don't uh i don't know don't don't die in a motorcycle accident i feel like i just jinxed you if you if I feel like if now I feel like if you die in a motorcycle accident it's my fault. 
Um, but you're, that's not going to happen to you because God is good and he will protect you, Tristan. I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I'm sorry. Good luck, Tristan. Hey, Lyle. Hey, what's your name, champion? Uh, my name is Rocky. Rocky. Um, is that your real name, or did someone give you that name? Uh, it's kind of a nickname that my friends know me by. Um, it's not my real name. How'd you get the name Rocky? Um, my name kind of sounds like ASAP, and so then it the nickname turned into ASAP Rocky, the rapper, oh. and then my friends just shortened it to Rocky. Um, what, uh, what's your real name? I mean, you don't have to tell me, but you can. Uh, it's a pretty unique real name, so, um, I prefer not to disclose it. I bet it's Aesop. One might think that. Because <laughs> you said it was pretty close to ASAP. It's kind of like that, yeah. All right. Do you think people are going to be able to identify you now, so you don't want to talk about stuff on here? Uh, no, nah, it's probably fine. I haven't. I don't have anything like incriminating to talk about. Okay. Well, what's up, man? What's going on? A a a sap Rocky. I'm just gonna call you. I'm gonna call you Dan. I've realized this. I don't. I can just call people. I don't, I think it's okay because this whole thing. It's supposed to be anonymous anyway. So, because I have this whole thing yeah. where I forget everyone's name. But why is that even matter? I would rather, like, don't even tell me your name. I only use the name as something to identify you by. So why don't I just assign everybody a name instead of asking for their names? And then we can do our anonymous phone call thing and not have to deal with, you know, the bullshit of names. You know, that's a that's a good point. It's a good I point. You can start doing that from now on. That's yeah. what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. Actually, I like the name Rocky. I'll call you that. Rocky, what's up? What do you want to talk about? <laughs> so, I mean, I texted you a, a couple things. Um, one was that uh, me and my roommates have a 9-11 themed uh, gambling machine where the jackpot is you blow up Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden. Where'd you get that? Um, and that's We got it for free on the side of the road. And it like works, too, which is like the best part. You have a picture of it? Yeah. Te- text it to me. Text it to the number. Okay. All right. You found it on the side uh, of the road. So what the jack? So it's a slot machine, and if you what what's on the slots is like if you get two, if you get three Osama bin Laden heads in a row, it blows up. Osama yeah, yeah. It's like it'll it'll put up like a bomb. And then it's like Saddam Hussein or Osama bin Laden next to it. It bl- they blow up like it's an exaggerated animation. Their eyeballs come out and whatnot. Oh, so this is like and then it replaces like a, it. It's got like a screen and shit. Yeah, yeah, the slot machine kind of st- style thing. Do, do you have um? Do you did you send it already? Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, it should it was? Okay. It's a video. I don't. Oh, it's a video. Right, let me but... watch this video. What the fuck? Why this video is not playing? Oh, what? What's the brand? What's it called? Uh, Uh, the gambling machine is called Magic Bomb, and then like the it, it's like from two thousand two is the um, the specific screen thing. Magic Bomb slot machine nine eleven. I'm just gonna Google it, see if it comes up. Um. No, it doesn't. All right, hold on. Let me try to get this video going. This is good. This is a. This is going to be really fun for all the audio listeners, the video listeners too. I'm not even going to put this video in the fucking thing. So this is just going to be listening to me watch a video, which I think is is fun. Um, okay, hold on. I'm still looking for it. Let's see. Okay. All right. No, this video. This is a video. Is a piece of shit. You you somehow. Yeah, this video is not working. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I don't have a picture of it. All right. Well, I can send it to you later. I'll take a picture when I get home. Send it to me later. That's. All right. Never mind. All right. We're. You know what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Fuck this. Fuck this. Fuck this. All right. What's it? It's. Hold on. No, I want to find it. 
But I, well, I'm also, I'm just, I feel like I'm just wasting, I don't know if, the, like, people are listening to this in their cars right now, and they're like, what the fuck, I'm watching, I'm listening to a guy try to find a YouTube video. I could... Magic, I but I guess, I guess people shot? listen to podcasts, like, to simulate, like, other people, someone else being in the room, right? And, like, this is kind of like... Like, you know when you're uh, in a room with another person and that other person's trying to find a video on YouTube? This yes, is kind of like exactly. that. So this, I guess, provides something. to I just... Magic Bomb Slot Machine 911. Is that... Okay, hold on. Osama... Bin, Magic Bomb Slot Machine Osama Bin Laden. No, it's not here. What? Oh, man. Send I me take another. A oh, wait a minute. Wait, no, it is here. Wait, I found it. I found it on eBay. Oh, no, here it is. Yeah? yeah, okay. I found it on eBay. Oh, yeah. What's Magic it going bomb. I uh, went for $300. Damn, that's cheap. This is pretty cheap compared. I mean, there's no, there's no fucking video of it. Oh, you know what it is? It's just the. Um, it's just the chip. It's not even the. Okay, here we go. All right, anyway. All right, it says here um, you have 70 drinks a week and your roommates think you're an alcoholic. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I've been cutting it back a little bit, you know. Um, but yeah, uh, pretty much. Uh, so I was doing this thing where I was living in the woods for a while. Why do I can't and, believe we uh, spent? I didn't have any. We spent like uh, the good. How long have we been talking on the phone for? <laughs> We've been talking on the phone for six minutes, and we spent trying to find a YouTube video when we could have been talking about hanging out in the woods and getting unreasonably drunk. Anyway, let's let's. Uh, and now I'm talking about it more. Uh, all right, go ahead. You t I'm going to stop interrupting you. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, so I was in the woods for a while without access for alcohol. Um, for about three months. And then, uh, you know, I was like, I came back and I was like, well, you know, might as well hit it hard. You know, I haven't had booze in a while. So I did that. And then, uh, then my next semester of college started and I was like, I have a, I'm going to have a job this summer. So I why were you, why were you living in the woods? Job. Why were you living in the woods? Uh, my college has a really cool program actually where, uh, you can, do a semester of college, 17 credits, in the woods. And live in a tent. How much did you pay to live in a tent in the woods to do college? Um, plus tuition, it was $4,000. You paid $4,000 to live in a tent in the woods? Uh, yeah, but I got 17 credits, and uh, I got to eat Three months, I got to eat bear meat, elk meat, a um, bunch of really cool stuff happened. You lived out of a tent for three months, and was it, the, was it just you, were you alone, or were there other people living in the tents? No, there was uh, 12 other students, or 11 other students. And uh, how deep in the woods were you? Uh, we were in the largest designated wilderness area and the lower 48. So we were like 28 miles from like the nearest civilization. All right, so plus tuition, all inclusive, four thousand dollars. Well, I mean, I paid tuition, and then to get out there, the fee for like all the food and whatnot, and for flying us, you know, out there was um, four thousand dollars. Okay, so how much was the tuition? I pay like. Oh gosh, I pay seven thousand dollars in tuition. Is that a lot? Like or do you 000. think that's a lot or a little bit of money to go to school in the woods? Um, I mean, I feel good about my, you know, to go into the woods. I mean, that's probably a lot of money to go into the woods. I think the biggest thing though is that I got seventeen credit hours of college while I was also enjoying the woods. You know, so I would have been it's paying kind of tuition anyways. It's kind of like you studied abroad, but in the woods. Yeah. Yeah, I, I studied abroad, but in the woods, pretty much. That's and a good way I'm to put it. When I'm thinking of this tent, is it like a, like a night? Are you glamping? Are you, are you holding out on me? Yeah, it's, it's definitely... 
No, it was definitely glamping. They were nice, like, uh, canvas tents. They were hot tents, so we had wood stoves in them. So when it got cold in, like, October and whatnot, you'd stuff it full of wood. Okay, I thought you were living in, like, a shitty, like, dick Sporting Goods tent. Nah, nah. Um, all right, so you lived in a tent for three months, and that somehow led to you getting drunk all the time. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I wasn't drinking for a while, and then uh, when I got back and started my spring semester, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ham, because I have a job this summer, and I won't be able to drink, you know, because... I'll be, like, working a lot. So I was like, I'm only taking 12 credits. Might as well take all this extra time, you know, get it out of my system. And so, yeah, I've been I've been boozing. And uh, why, do you keep, you're, why are you blowing into the microphone? Am I? Sorry yeah. about that. Or are you outside? Yeah, I'm outside. Go inside. I know you like being outside, but go inside. All right. Sorry, I was at a library and I didn't want to disturb people. It's okay. Um, they can they can just probably like? just deal with it. They can probably just deal with it. Um. All right. So, how much are you drinking now? Um, like a bottle, like a fifth, and like uh, two racks a week, probably. Okay. All right. And um, how long have you been doing that for? Mm, about three months. And how's that affecting your life? I mean, I'd say I'm pretty functional. Uh, I've got A's in all my classes. I'm like, I'm actually graduating early from college, like a semester early. So Man, you got a lot of I'd, credits in the world. I'm functional. Yeah. If you want to graduate college, uh, I, I don't know. I'm doing good. Just fucking go into the fucking woods <laughs> outside of your. All these people are spending all their time trying to graduate early in the in the classrooms. They could be doing it in the woods. Yeah, it was a really good experience. Yeah. Um. Are you gonna stop? Yeah. Yeah. When do you stop? I think, well, I mean, classes end May 10th, so I was going to say, you know, that was going to be the cutoff. All right, it's May, as as we're, as we're talking, it's uh, April 30th. Yeah. All right, so you have 10 more days to drink before you stop, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, I I don't think I'll stop completely, like, but it'll definitely just be like a normal, reasonable amount. What's a normal, reasonable amount to you? Like maybe only on the weekends, and even then, only like five beers. What are you gonna do when you graduate? Uh, I hope to go work in the nuclear industry. Hmm. Okay. Definitely can't get drunk doing that although that was homer simpson's yeah. job and he was you know kind of kind of bumbling yeah he, he seemed to be doing all right you know yes living the american dream yeah although that is a cartoon so i wouldn't base any mm -hmm. life decisions around it what are you going to do in, nu in nuclear stuff i'd specialize in like fuel storage that's what i want to get into is like a uh, fuel storage and Environmental requirements. You gonna blow anything up? Mm, nah, not not really my forte. What, no, what, I'm a big fan what of if someone pisses you off? What if someone <laughs> pisses you off? You gonna blow them up? Uh, nah, not my. I don't. I don't, I don't know. No one's ever really pissed me off either. No one's ever. No one's ever pissed you off. I mean, no. I mean, people have, but I don't think I've I've gotten that angry. I've never when's gotten the last that time, angry. When's the last time someone pissed you off? Uh, my housing management ripped a hole in my my tent because they didn't like where I put it. I set it out to dry, and then they, when they were tearing it down because they didn't like where I was, they ripped a hole in it. And I was, Blow I was them up, find out where that. they live, and <laughs> send a nuke to their house. 
You can do that now. That's what you paid $11,000 to learn how to do. And you must use your skills practically in the real world by blowing up people who piss you off. Hmm. Hmm. I feel like I'm going to get myself in trouble by telling you all this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I could get in trouble just by hearing it. No, you can. You can never. You can. I genuinely believe you can do whatever you want. You specifically. Hmm. That's why I'm telling you, you should blow people up who piss you off. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I don't have kids or like any obligations. How old are you? Twenty-one. All right. Um, are you gonna stop drinking? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Are you? How confident are you? You'll be able to stop. I feel pretty good. Um, about a couple of weeks ago, I took like a a two week break, and I held that up. So like, I know I can go without it. So like, you know, I figure I could just do that again, but for longer. Is it fun? Are you having fun drinking a lot? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure, hundred percent. What do you do? What do you do when you get really drunk? Uh, you know, I get, I go home, I like talk with my roommates, um, I'll play video games. Uh, a lot of times I just kind of do homework as well. Like I'll just like start slamming while I'm doing homework and then go to bed. I've talked about, I may have talked about this before, but I was, um, a handful of, only a handful of times, um, I've gotten really sad and I was, and I was, or like anxious, and I was like, let me just get, let me get drunk, see what happens, and I did, and it was, it's numbing, that's what it numbs, and I thought to myself, I was like, oh, this, I understand why people do this all the time. It makes perfect sense as to why people yeah. do this all the time. It like, because life is, ju- I don't know about you, but like, I mean, you maybe, I mean, we're both very young, but um. There's like a weight. It's like you're carrying a... Like being alive, sometimes it feels like you're carrying a big fucking rock. And when you're drunk, it's kind of like you're not carrying the rock for like... It's like you're putting down the rock for a second, you know? Yeah. But then when you sober up and you pick the rock back up, the rock is like twice as heavy now. Mm. Well, that's why you just got to keep drinking. That's what they say, but they are dead. That's a that's a good point. Yeah. Um Yeah, drinking is crazy. I get why people do it. I get why people do it. But you're too um Didn't you have a good time? So when you were in the woods, you were sober though. Oh, completely. Yeah, nothing. I had nothing. And were you having a good time? Oh, a blast, dude. I was just hiking right. everywhere and taking right. in gorgeous views. All right. So then you've experienced life not getting drunk all the time, and it was good. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. I'm not worried about you. I think you're going to do great. I think you're going to be okay. Yeah. You I know, think I, you'll be I, able I, to I stop I my roommates that. Yeah. What are your roommates saying? Yeah. Are you with them right now? No, you're at the library. No. Yeah, I'm at the library. I was doing homework and uh, watching your podcast. Okay, what do your roommates say? Um, you know, they they start getting a little concerned because uh, I like wake up, pour a glass of coffee, and put a couple of things of whiskey in it, and then like yeah. go to class. Yeah. Um, but like you know, that's just for class, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I I really but, do get. I really understand why. You would want to be drunk all the time. And it's not like it's affecting my life. Like No, um, it's a hundred percent affecting your life. I mean I'm doing well, I think. Yeah, but you're get, you <laughs> I feel like part of doing well is not like I don't think your roommates see you pouring whiskey into your coffee and say, man, um, Rocky's doing really well. Mm. Like that, like being drunk all the time in and of itself 
is not doing well. That's why there's no such there's really no such thing as like a functioning drug addict alcoholic because that in and of itself is 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 a sign of disparity. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But fuck fuck I get it, man. I mean uh is crazy. Going to class sucks so bad. It's so awful. It's so like it the, just the day the Dude. daily fucking monotony. I have a cool job and I still can't handle the daily fucking monotony, you know? Like this it, it, I mean talking to so... you would be so much easier if I was pissed drunk right now, but I don't do it. And I'm not saying that because I'm not saying this to be mean to you. I'm saying No, no, I get it, man. You know, you know what I'm saying. Just life. Just dealing yeah. just doing stuff. Just doing anything. Oh yeah. But you can't yeah. do that. You can't do it. You can't do it. You yeah. can't do it. Yeah. Because um I'm gonna try to why can't you do it? You can't do it because it's not good. It's like I said, being I we I could get so dr- I could get drunk every time I recorded this podcast and the podcast could be great, but I can't say to myself, you know, oh I'm doing great because the podcasts are are doing okay. I because I'm drunk all the time. It's not good. Mm. You part yeah, of I, I think I'm being alive the wrong metric. is like you just gotta hold up. You just gotta hold up that rock. You just gotta hold it. It's your it's your rock, man. You own a rock. You get to have a rock. Congratulations. It's your birthright to carry a big heavy rock all over the place. <laughs> and you what you're gonna get drunk? You're gonna misplace your rock? No, you don't wanna do that. You're gonna hold that rock with pride. You know? Hmm. That's a good that's a good point, Gek. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I'll stop. Wouldn't it be I'll hilarious stop. if I revealed to you that I was really drunk right now? I'm not. But if I was, it would just negate everything. But that's the thing. If I was, it would negate everything I'm saying because I'd be a hypocrite. You know, I don't think it would. I mean, I, I think it would give what you're saying credit. You could be like, I'm. you could say you're trying to stop because you know it's dysfunctional. Yeah. Um. What else? The woods. We talked about the woods. We talked about Osama bin Laden. Anything else, mm-hmm. Rocky? Mm-hmm. Anything else? Um, hmm, hmm. There's a Japanese whiskey that is clear. Sanatory, no right? It's not, no. It's like, it starts with an H, but it's completely clear. And I, I just, I had some, and it's really good. You can tell it's whiskey, but it's like... It throws me off because it's clear. Are you are you drunk right now? Um, slightly. I thought about. I thought there was like. Uh, I thought I've thought about being drunk all the time as a, and I'm not an alcohol guy. I'm a big. I'm a. I'm a lot of. I'm a guy of a lot of different stuff. That's not like cool you know like getting high all the time and shit but never it's never been uh alcohol uh but i've thought about it sometimes like all right the only way to chill is to be drunk all the time but that's you're that's not that's that that's a path exponentially downwards so i'm gonna wish you some good luck in uh yeah i'll i'll take your advice to heart, man. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be off it. Okay. All right. We're, 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 we're gonna. I sound like I'm drunk. We're gonna hang out. We're gonna go into the woods. We're gonna look at trees. We're gonna breathe, and we're gonna uh, travel through the monotony of life with great pride and honor that we are alive to do so. We're gonna try our best to do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks, Gek. I mean, I, I hope you have a nice day, man. Yeah, man. Get, tell tell the people uh, at the library that you're hanging out with that I'm sorry that we interrupted their books and shit. Nah, it's all right. It's all right. It's all good. Take care, Rocky. It's like the group study floor. So give the nine eleven right, pinball. Have a nice day, give Gek. the nine eleven slot slot machine. A, wait, wait, real quick, real quick. 
Are you in front of the nine yeah. eleven slot machine right now? No, you're not. You're at the library. I am not. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say to give it a spin for me. I will when I get home. All right, thanks, man. All right, have a nice day, Gek. You too. Gek bless. I was just in Vegas. I had a show there, and I stayed at a casino hotel for three nights. And um, I didn't gamble. I don't like to gamble. Um, I like blackjack, but I've never, I've never ever played at a casino. I played. I gambled at a casino once. I did it once. I took ten dollars, and I put it into the Willy Wonka themed slot machine, and I pressed a button, and my ten dollars was then gone. Um, and that's why I don't like casinos because they're, it's like Dave and Buster's, but you can't play any of the games. But I will say, if I saw like a Sada- if I saw an Osama bin Laden slot machine, would I put in? Would I give it ten dollars? I gave Willy Wonka ten dollars. I'm not going to give Osama bin Laden ten dollars. You know what? I'm not. He doesn't deserve it for all that stuff. It's not.